Hey, what is going on, everyone? This is your boy from Real Side, the Bengal Dragon. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons, as all your support really helps you remain motivated to continue making a variety of different type of videos on this channel, covering many topics. But for now, I am covering cricket as I am a Bangladesh cricket supporter, a Bangladeshi myself. And also, all your support in that free way will help this legally blind YouTube content creator remain motivated to continue doing what he's doing on this channel. Right, so the third ODI just concluded a few hours ago. First of all, congratulations to Bangladesh for another Bangla wash. Yes, I've been waiting for a long time to use that word outside of a series involving Zimbabwe. So Bangla wash, Obinandan. Congratulations for the Bangla wash. Yeah. So, also, congratulations to Nicholas Puran. First half century against Bangladesh. And Nick Puran, he showed. He showed how to bat on such a surface like this. And this is why someone like Shea Hope, you would expect him with how much experience he has against Bangladesh. I believe before this, in Odia, he's averaging about 90s. Given how well versed he is in playing against Bangladesh, you would expect him to act, act, at least have this type of an approach as well. So Shea Hope's bad performance really baffles me at this, you know, in this ODI series. So um, it was surprising to see Kyle Myers was not playing today. Uh, I don't know; he might have been injured or something like that. Alzari Joseph came back, and. People are talking about extra spinners. And here um, I followed um, the live commentary of uh, West Indian Cricket Radio. It was on the West Indies Cricket YouTube channel live streaming. One of the commentators mentioned something poignant that West Indies only have 13 people. They don't have another spinner. So this is possibly West Indies themselves misreading the Providence pitch in Guyana. So that being said, congratulations to Litton Kumar Das for scoring a half century. And congratulations to Taijul Islam for picking his first five wicket haul in ODI cricket. And about Taijul Islam, I'll get to him in a little bit. Okay. And also congratulations to Gudakesh Moti for picking up his first four-wicket haul in ODI cricket. He's showing some potential. Let's just hope he doesn't fall away like Akhil Hussain did. Because when Akhil Hussain debuted, I thought to myself, now West Indies have found a good left-arm spinner, left-arm orthodox spinner. They can do something good with him if they manage him right. But in this series, we saw that even in very spin-friendly conditions, Akhil Hussain... Not that good. Although I believe he got Litton Kumar Das out twice, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, West Indies were sent in to bat first. And finally, finally, we got a total that was somewhat of a challenge to chase down on this particular surface, which Tamim Iqbal has mentioned that it is worse than Mirpur. It is worse than the surface where even if you throw a square brick, okay, using laser gun precision at the pitch, that square brick will also turn 45 degrees. Okay, if you throw it straight, it will turn. Anything you throw will turn, okay? So this pitch was, uh, according to Tommy McBall, was worse than that. But West Indies still managed to put up a good total or a more decent total. I won't say a good total because a good total would be around 200, maybe 210. But a more respectable total in 178. And this gave Bangladesh a bit of a scare at one point at least, or I would like to think. Because Bangladesh, they dropped Shoriful Islam and they played Tajul Islam. And I believe that was the only change that happened. And that was a revealing change. So Bangladesh still went in with their usual batting lineup. And Nazmul Hossein Shanto, to me, he is now demoted. Demoted back to Nazmul Hossein tomorrow because he does not perform today. 
Okay, whenever he shows up, he will get out today. He maybe he'll perform tomorrow. So I'm calling him Nazmul Hussain tomorrow. Once again, did not perform today. Maybe he will perform tomorrow. Okay. He was sent to open. And I'm sorry. Now I will have to bring in my biggest gripe with Tamim Iqbal. Okay. Why are you doing this to Animal Hawk? Okay. He performed in ODIs in the 50 over format. And you are dropping him. You are not playing him because he did not score in the test matches and the T20s. So you automatically expect that form in one format of the game will automatically translate to other formats of the game. This is something a 10-year-old or a 12-year-old might think on how cricket form works. Not mature people. Okay? And that's why... I'm like, if you have this philosophy that Nazmul Hussain tomorrow was here first, so we'll keep waiting for that tomorrow to come when Nazmul Hussain will perform. Until then, every door is closed as long as Nazmul Hussain tomorrow does not get injured today. Then there is no point of the domestics. The domestic is serving a purpose to create substitute fielders? You are creating substitute fielders and people who carry out the drinks. Is that the is that the purpose of your domestics? Now I know that there is an A tour of West Indies. Uh, all the matches, uh, like believe a, a, a bunch of four day matches, a bunch of ODI matches and whatnot. All the matches taking place in one stadium. Oh, by the way, okay. Animal Hawk is in there. I better see Animal Hawk play in each and every match. Okay, I am still surprised. Animal Hawk is not in the tour of Zimbabwe. In fact, if I was the BCB, BCB president, I would almost send an executive order type of thing that put Animal Hawk in the Zimbabwe tour and send Nazmul Hussain tomorrow to the A side to prove himself because he has been given enough and more opportunities in ODIs. Okay, e enough, enough. Afif Hussain is a different story. Afif Hussain at least can bat. Okay. And Afif Hussain, he's more of an emergency type player. He is not a carry a momentum forward type of player. He's a rescue or saving ship type of player. Yes, there is a difference. Okay, but that being said, West Indian bowling, it was a bit more disciplined, but they had a bigger total to defend. Okay. And kudos to... Uh, Nurul Hassan and I believe Mehdi Hassan Miraz in the end who were not out. And Nurul Hassan also providing a good headache for Bangladesh, for BCB, if they have the head screwed on straight. That if Mushrik Rahim is going to come back, how are you going to drop Nurul Hassan? Because he is giving you no reason to drop him. Okay? He has been performing his wicket-keeping Behind the stumps have been pretty good. He got a bunch of stumpings. And Taijul Islam, you know what? I'll say this. Taijul Islam is looking much more ready to be the premier left-arm spinner in ODIs for Bangladesh. Because in test, what happened, you have the luxury of just bowling delivery after delivery after delivery. Okay, eventually a wicket will come. In ODIs, you don't have that luxury. You only have a limited number of overs. And in those conditions, Tajul Islam managed to get five wicket haul on his return to ODIs. That is very telling. And also, notice how he got the five wickets. He got them through turn, bounce, and variation. Okay, he was varying his speed quite a bit. Notice how many people he got bold. This is by change of pace of a left arm orthodox spinner. That they will beat the batter by pace. Okay, this shows that Tajul Islam has matured very well as a left arm spinner. And his place in the limited overs format should not be put off the table. So Bangladesh have a good headache moving forward. Hopefully, I don't know if the squad for Zimbabwe has been announced yet. I didn't look or I didn't find anything. 
that specific in terms of an article, but hopefully he is there in that Zimbabwe tour and we will get to see much more of Tajir Islam in that Zimbabwe tour. But as for this match, West Indian positives, Nicholas Puran, yeah, their top order really, really needs uh, shaking up. Uh, that new guy, I forgot his name, Ch- Casey? Chassis or something like that? I- I'm sorry, I-, I forgot his name. He might have some potential. Okay, Shay Hope, I'm uh, Shay Hope, Brandon King, um, I'm sorry. Uh, you need to do a lot better than what you did, especially Shay Hope. You need to do a lot better than this. India is coming over. And yeah, Virat Kohli, whatnot, they're not there. Listen, India can put forward two, maybe three first string sides. India's bench strength is that good that they can put forward 22 players. All of them are equally as good. Like for the most part, all of them are equally as good as one another. So West Indies can't even take them lightly. But overall, 11 consecutive victory for Bangladesh. And this also goes to show why Tamim Iqbal is, for the most part, I'm still angry about the Anamal Huck decision, for the most part, the right captain in this format. And rightfully so. I don't think it was for his uh, batting, but I think it was much more for his captaincy, his aggressive captaincy. And even the commentators, the live radio commentators pointed this out, that Tamim Iqbal's captaincy, that he's constantly rotating his bowlers and constantly applying a lot of pressure on the West Indian batters. Tamim Iqbal's captaincy was very good in this series. Yes, the pitch played in his favor, but still, the execution is important. You must be able to properly execute a plan even if conditions are in your favor. So congratulations to Bangladesh once again. Commiserations to West Indies. But this match, they did try a bit more. And by the way, I have a question. Where is Kimar Roach? Kimar Roach was or is still the bane of left arm batters worldwide. Is he injured or something? Because of all things, you would expect, especially Kima Roach, someone who I believe made his debut against Bangladesh, to be in this ODI side. So him being absent also uh, perplexed me a little bit. But anyways, shout out to like all the people who comment, like Rare Cricket Videos, uh, Omar Queen SC, Hot of Flex, and everyone else. Uh, all your support is much deeply appreciated. And please do hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons. And I will see you in the next video. It's your boy Tanvir Saad, the Bengal Dragon, signing out.